Southern Wisconsin pays its respects to a young Marine who comes home to Wisconsin after losing his life on a base in California. We'll have a live report. And an update on more than a dozen firearms stolen from a Dane County gun shop last fall. Plus, we'll have the latest on an eight-year-old boy shot in the face by his babysitter in Grant County. It's next at 10. This is News 3 at 10. And thank you for joining us tonight. The body of a slain Marine is back home in Janesville this evening. Private First Class Ethan Barclay Weber Paul was killed at Camp Pendleton last week. Our Rock County reporter Jenna Mitta live outside the funeral home tonight in Janesville where the processional arrived earlier this evening. Jenna. Not in Janesville. Great show of support from that community tonight. Our Jenna Mitta reporting live. Thanks Jenna. A bank on Milwaukee Street was robbed tonight. Police are still looking for those responsible. It happened at the Chase Bank about 540 tonight. Police say two men entered the bank and ordered people to the floor at gunpoint. Both men left the bank on foot with an undisclosed amount of money. Both uh, police are conducting canine tracks and are working to get video from that bank. An update to a massive gun robbery from last fall. The Dane County Sheriff's Department says it's recovered several of the guns stolen from PT firearms in Cross Plains. Back in October, burglars used a stolen car to crash into that store and take 14 guns. Dane County Sheriff's spokesperson Elise Schaefer didn't go into detail about where or when those guns were found, saying only that some have been recovered in different places at different times. Schaefer says some of those weapons are still missing tonight. To weather now, a lot of melting out there today. and That's your first alert forecast. All right, thanks, Gary. A Madison police officer is back in court after being charged with drunk driving with a child in the car. A criminal complaint says someone called 911 after seeing Kelly Heff's car plow through some road signs last summer. Documents say her blood alcohol content was at 0.27 and she had her five-year-old child in the back seat. Today, one of the arresting officers and a colleague of Heff's testified about what happened. What led you ultimately to make the decision to place the defendant under arrest? Based on the totality of the circumstances, from the witness information regarding the vehicle's driving behavior, the defendant's blank stare, bloodshot eyes, admission that she had been drinking, not just drinking, but too much, the odor of intoxicants coming from her, her behavior on scene, her inability to locate her license, her walking away when I told her not to, uh, her refusal to perform standard field sobriety tests. Based on the totality of those circumstances, that is why I placed her under arrest. Heft was in court for a motion hearing today where a judge denied request to suppress evidence by her lawyer. She'll be back in court next month. Police arrested a Columbus man yesterday on a suspicion of possessing child pornography. Attorney General Brad Schimmel announced the arrest of David Briquette today. According to the complaint, authorities had searched his home and found a hard drive containing images of nude underage males. The Department of Justice says Briquette has had previous convictions related to child exploitation. State attorneys want a judge to civilly commit a man who sexually assaulted and killed a girl more than four decades ago. Gerald Turner was convicted of that crime back in 1975. The victim, his nine-year-old Fond du Lac neighbor, was last seen leaving home to go trick-or-treating Halloween 1973. Turner is due to be released from prison in Dane County on February 1st. The Wisconsin Department of Justice has filed a petition looking to have Turner committed indefinitely as a sexually violent person. In Grant County, an eight-year-old boy is in the hospital after being shot by his babysitter last night. It happened at a home on County Road E outside Livingston. Deputies there say a 13-year-old boy and his eight-year-old cousin were home alone when the teenager opened a locked safe and took out a rifle, loading and unloading it a number of times. At one point, he shot it off, hitting the eight-year-old in the face. Deputies say the boy was conscious and alert when first responders arrived. He was taken to a hospital in Platteville, then flown to the University of Iowa Hospital. Sheriff Nate Dreckman stressed the importance of never pointing a gun directly at someone while playing, even if you think it's unloaded. You need to consider of putting the ammunition in a completely different spot, securing it in a completely different spot. Uh, most people that I know, you know, they, they, they secure the weapons, but then the ammunition is sitting, you know, right on top of the safe or what have you. And so let's maybe start thinking about, you know, should we put that in a completely different spot and should we put that in a separate safe itself? So you'd have to gain access to both. Family members tell News 3 the boy underwent surgery in Iowa City and is currently in stable condition. The sheriff says his office is still investigating who owns that gun. He says potential charges could still come for the teenager or the owner of the gun. 
The entire board of directors of USA Gymnastics will be replaced in the wake of the Larry Nassar sex abuse scandal. The organization's team doctor also worked at Michigan State University where students took part in a rally tonight. CBS News correspondent Danielle Nottingham has more on the fallout from Los Angeles. And fans at tonight's Michigan State men's basketball game against the Badgers wore teal in support of the sexual abuse victims. The ATF now joining an investigation into a fire at an employee dorm in the Wisconsin Dells. The fire started around 4 a.m. yesterday and caused $5 million in damage. Take a look at some of that video. The ATF agent in charge says their involvement doesn't necessarily indicate criminal activity, but the extra hands are needed to help conduct witness interviews and sift through all that debris. Milwaukee Bucks rookie Sterling Brown was tased and arrested early this morning after double parking at a Walgreens. Around 2 a.m., police found a vehicle that was parked across two disability parking spaces. There's no word yet on what exactly caused the interaction between Brown and police to escalate. Police are trying to find a man who shot a car with a BB gun, causing it to crash tonight. Middleton police responding to Napoli Lane on uh, about 4 o'clock this afternoon. There was a report of a weapons violation there. The report was that a male suspect had shot at a vehicle, causing it to crash into a light pole. Anyone with information about this particular case is asked to contact the Middleton police. The Beloit PD is seeing an increase in success catching suspects. They say it's all thanks to social media. This week, police were looking for a woman who they say shoplifted from a Walgreens store there in Beloit. There's the picture, and they asked people to identify this individual, and within 12 hours, a tip came in, and a suspect was behind bars. Police say they're also using social media to inform people about recent arrests or things they simply want residents to know. So if there's... Um, a road closed in their area because of a police presence or because of an accident. We like to let them know ahead of time so they're not inconvenienced in their day. The Beloit Police Department is trying to mix up its Facebook content even more. It's planning to include some profiles of officers as well as a virtual ride-along. The Center for Disease Control says this year's deadly flu season is far from over. Influenza outbreaks continue to be widespread in every state except Hawaii. The deaths of seven more children were reported this week, bringing the total to 37 since October. Doctors say the flu season will continue for several more weeks.